Wait. We're good? Good to go. All right, let's get going. So welcome, everybody. Uh, so today we are going to be talking about uh, using SolidWorks Visualize uh, and SolidWorks Composer uh, together um, to, to create some pretty pretty great stuff, some, some, some pretty cool stuff. Uh, so just some quick introductions. Uh, my name is Scott Ellery. I'm an application expert uh, with Javelin Technologies. Um, and I'm Scott Lidgey. And I am the uh, team manager for the technical solutions team. So I'm going to start to kick things off with just a little bit. What is this uh, webcast all about? Um, it's, it's to get across the idea that uh, we want to bring together different departments and leverage our data a lot more than what you might be doing today. So let's start with how a typical product life cycle looks today. I mean, quite often it starts with a concept phase. From there, we get into design and engineering. Uh, and then you know, we're into manufacturing, hopefully. Uh, you know, but you know, inevitably, uh, during that time is when we start kicking in what we're, our main focus today, which is marketing materials, technical documentation. And the reason why it doesn't start till this point is because a lot of people are using traditional methods like actual photography. So they're waiting for the actual product to be manufactured before we can actually get this documentation started. From there, hopefully we're delivering it to market. But I think we all know it doesn't happen that easily. You know, we're always gonna end up with some sort of design change happening. Uh, whether it's in manufacturing, designers find a, a better way of doing things. And so what this does in turn is lengthens this out even longer, right? So marketing has to go and redo a lot of these images and little screen caps possibly, or redo the photos and mark those up. And so we're just lengthening this process and lengthening out the time we get our money back. So today's topic is how we can uh, leverage the SolidWorks innovation platforms. So SolidWorks has many products today that we can uh, take advantage of and streamline these processes. So today we're specific, more specifically looking at SolidWorks, SolidWorks Visualize, and SolidWorks Composer. So when those three items come into play, that timeline looks a little more like this. We're gonna to start to put all these events in parallel with one another. So as design changes happen through the design phase, uh, we, can, we know that uh, marketing and technical documentation, they can be started far earlier in the process because we know that we're gonna be able to update to them quickly and effectively. So we're shortening that full uh, design life cycle down. So again, uh, what we're trying to get across to you guys is that you know, what we're doing with models, there's so much information there. It's not just for design, it's for, you know, we're, what we're creating is like a virtual twin of what we're creating as a real, real world product. So with that virtual twin, you know, we can get, give access to more departments in your company to take advantage of this great information and utilize it for their own needs. Okay, so just kind of a, a little agenda for uh, kind of what we're going to be going through today. So we're going to start off, um, and you can kind of see at the bottom of your screen there, we've, we've got a, a technical document that we want to put together, a little bit of a, of a brochure uh, for our new product. Uh, in this case, it's Jab Espresso. It's our new espresso machine. I'm very excited about it. Uh, we at Javelin drink a lot of coffee. Uh, so this is a great new product for us. Uh, so you can see on the left, we've got some, some placeholders in place. We've kind of got a basic template down, and what we want to do is we want to be able to change that to the right-hand side. Uh, kind of working together with Visualize and Composer to, uh, to get that done quickly. So we're going to start off with uh, some, some photorealistic uh, content, some rendered content out of Visualize, uh, just to create some, uh, some marketing material, some, uh, you know, a title page and maybe some graphics for, uh, for a contact page. Uh, we're going to run into some Composer stuff uh, with Scott, uh, the other Scott, um, to, uh, to get some great uh, vector-based images uh, and some great step-by-step um, -step instructions. Uh, we're going to go through some design changes. You can see how Visualize and Composer handles that. And then just some nice ways of taking it beyond just that regular, um, uh, you know, that brochure and that, that technical documentation to add some interactivity between the two, uh, the two programs as well. Okay, so we're going to start with, uh, with some, uh, some Visualize content. So I'm just going to jump into Visualize. And uh, you can see right away, so this is just a, a file I've kind of got underway. I've, I've kind of got some basics in here. I've got a couple configurations uh, of the part already. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to take this and we're going to create a couple, uh, a couple marketing images from them that we can add into our brochure. So uh, for my first one, I'm going to use uh, the, the no cup. I just want the machine for this particular one. Uh, and I can, you know, quickly, again, just like visualize, everything's drag and drop, right? So I can add some appearances just by dragging and dropping. 
maybe I want to throw a little bit of chrome uh, on some of these to really make them pop. Right, and I can really customize this the way that I want. So maybe we had a we had a meeting. We decided, <clears throat> excuse me, that we wanted to make these chrome. Right, very easy change, uh, and very quick and visualized. Um, so before I go to set up, set up the rest of my uh, my frame here, uh, I may have gotten some material from marketing. Right, so maybe they don't want to do a lot of post processing. So let's try and do it all right from visualize. So they gave me a background that they wanted me to work with. Okay, that they want to see our. Uh, our espresso machine on. So if I go to my source files here, you can see here's the backgrounds they gave us, right? Here's our title page background. And I can just drag and drop that right into Visualize, okay? And it's going to drop it on as a plate. So now I can go and I can start positioning my, uh, my espresso machine. So we can move it. Maybe we want it over here on the right side. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. And eh, maybe around there, that looks pretty good. We can also go through, uh, we can change our, our environment, maybe we want more of a high, co high contrast environment, give it more of a dramatic look, right? Something that matches the environment a little bit better. Uh, and that looks pretty good, okay? So that's what we're gonna do for our first configuration. So this is gonna be our, our title page. Uh, and if we go to our other configuration, okay? So what we can do here is, so we've got one camera for our, uh, our title page. Let's create a new camera. And let's name this, this is gonna be for a contact us page. Just some graphics that we can put together for the page. Okay, so you can see, and actually let me just stick this back over here real quick. Okay, so the first thing is again, marketing also gave us a background for that. So let's see if we can find, there it is there. And again, we'll just drag it and drop it. All right, and we can make this a little bit bigger. We rotate it a bit. Bring it over again if we wanted to change the appearances we could. All right, add some chrome on here. And even if we wanted to, you know, manipulate some of this, maybe we wanted these pieces right here, the pods, right? Maybe we want them yeah, maybe a little bit farther up, maybe in front of the espresso machine. Maybe kind of bundle it a little bit. All right, so it looks pretty good. We've got a nice little graphic over on the left. And now, again, using Visualize Professional, I can go to my output tools, and I can render all these configurations all at once. I can send them out to my queue if I want to, so I can stack them, uh, and I can get them out and uh, send them over. Uh, send them over to, uh, in this case, Scott, who's going who's to walk us through the composer side. Right. So you can see uh, very, very fast to get um, some very, very high quality results out of Visualize. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna take control here. So uh, next step is to you know, create that graphical documentation. Uh, but let's take a little bit of a peek about what's happening so far. Uh, also keep in mind that the, way, the reason why Scott and I are working so well together is that we are using one other of the innovation platform solutions by SOLIDWORKS is PDM uh, Professional. So we are actually working out of a vaulted system, so we're working on the same data set and seeing each other's updates all the time. So uh, he just added some new uh, renderings out to the project folder. And so if I was to look at uh, the Word document as it sits right now, we see all those placeholders. But with a quick uh, update, to all the linked images in my document, we're gonna see that, hey, there's those images popping right into position in our document. And down here, there's the other one with our contact uh, image with a nice rendering from Visualize. So this next step is to fill in this area of our document, which is a step-by-step -step procedure on how to use the product. So you know, we've done a lot of work up front to uh, give a little bit of text as to what the steps may pertain to. All right, so this next step, it's all about creating uh, images like this, where we're gonna be able to uh, do vector-based images, leverage a lot of the data from the model, uh, and even incorporate other models if you, if you like. So let's jump into Composer. So this is the Composer interface. So again, it's a separate app, so it can be used by other departments very easily. And the first step would typically be to open. And what you're doing is you're importing the SOLIDWORKS model and getting the geometry, but it's a much more simplified version of it, so the file size is much smaller, easier to work with. So the first thing we wanna do is create uh, maybe a step, step three is where we actually uh, 
put in the, uh, the espresso puck into the machine. So I've got a couple of images where I've already started, uh, but this one we're gonna continue on from this image, which is just changing the look. So we have a lot of capabilities of changing the color, changing the shader styles of our models. So what I'm gonna do to start is we're gonna take the parts that we have on screen here, and I'm just simply going to uh, revert them back to the way they originally came in, which was with a bit of a shininess or a bit of a color uh, reference to them, so that we're focused in on this, these parts of the, the model, or we're, we're sort of just referencing the other ones in just a, a wireframe here. So what I can do is move these parts around. So let's start by, we'll do a transform here. We're gonna rotate this model. Oops, let's uh, take a different angle of that so that we get the right manipulator. All right, so we'll just tip that up about 90 degrees. And when we lift that handle up, what else happens is uh, these components that are inside here pull out. So we're gonna switch this up to a translate mode. We're gonna pull those out a little bit to where they would typically be positioned. And then we're gonna take the espresso cup and pull that out. So that's basically the image I wanna have, but now we wanna describe that better with maybe some authoring tools like arrows. So let's grab maybe a circular arrow or we'll start, place it here possibly. We'll position it in the middle somewhere. And then these are full of properties. You know, what does it look like? How big is it? And all those properties on the left-hand panel. But first thing I'm gonna do is just pull this back. Make it look a little better that way. We'll scale it up maybe. And we'll just make sure it's sort of centered up on my model. And the nice thing here is that it is in a 3D environment where traditional techniques would be in a 2D and it's a lot of uh, playing around and working with the, the geometry to get the look you want. But you probably come up with a company standard eventually, so you, know, you can save your presets very easily into styles. Uh, another arrow I'd like to show here is how we're going to uh, pull the puck or put the puck in here. So we're gonna, again, snap in a simple arrow here. Again, maybe we'll pull that out a little bit, change the style, scale it up a bit. All right, so we'll just zoom back out, check it out. Maybe we'll, that's the view we wanna have for this, uh, this view. So all we have to do is once we have what we like on screen, we just simply take a snapshot of it. So we'll snap, create a view. Uh, a good practice is to rename these views. So this is gonna be step three out of our all of our other uh, steps. So we'll watch what happens when I actually go back to the default view here. When I come back, everything sort of transitions or animates. So although I'm concentrating on creating some nice 2D imagery for this document, I'm being set up for an animation, something interactive, which we'll get to later. The other view I want to show here is actually a, a sort of a parts list uh, for the, the end of the catalog. And I don't need all this geometry, so I can simply you know, highlight and hide these, uh, these documents or these parts. I can add in other parts as well. Let's get rid of the two cups. All right, and now I'm gonna sort of just pull things apart into more of an exploded view. All right, so we'll grab the components. And then we'll just you know, pull them out where we see fit. Uh, we can get in here and be a little more detailed about it. And maybe I'd like to show the lid lifting up, how it actually rotates up. So we'll take that and we'll do a simple little rotate like that. A little more interesting. Uh, again, we're gonna take uh, all the base components down here. So this is the tray and the uh, bin that we need to empty periodically. So we're gonna show how that pulls out. And we'll take the bin up here. So maybe that's sort of the view I'd like to show. But now I wanna have a parts list with uh, labels attached to these components. So let's do this again, where I'm gonna pick up just the components maybe I wanna show in my listing. We may not wanna show every part that's part of the assembly. Now those are some of the parts we're gonna to refer to quite a bit, so let's use those. And we go to another one of my workshops here to create a bill of material, or a parts list. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna generate BOM IDs for just the selected objects. 
right? And then what I want to do is show that bill material on screen. And we also want to create callouts. Now callouts, we can position a lot of different ways. One of my favorite ones, I think, is the uh, parametric, which just puts the, the balloons, and if it's an interactive environment, as I rotate or reposition other items, we can, they'll move around uh, and go to a nice position that's nice and legible. The uh, parts list, you know, I don't like where it sits right now. What I'm going to do is bring all this over and move my part list up. Again, everything is full of properties and you can save your company standards if you'd like. Uh, you know, even down to like the text height, text style, you know, put in 12 to bump that up a little bit. All right, so that's not a bad looking view for a parts list. So what we're going to do is again, go back to views, generate a new view, and we'll call that exploded. All right, so we've got the, uh, the rest of the views are already generated for this project. Now I need to export this ready for the uh, Word document or any publishing tool doc, uh, format that you, you guys might be using today uh, and update the images. So there's two different workshops because I want two different styles of images. First one we're gonna look at is high resolution images. And so the high, resolu high resolution image is uh, got a lot of great properties, you know, a lot of uh, options for you know, alpha channels, anti-aliasing options, the, what is the resolution for different size images you might want. Another great uh, tool here is that I can save them all out in one step, which saves me a lot of time. So I'm gonna save this out. I'm just saving it to my image folder. In this case, I'm using JPEGs, but we have options for other file types. So we're gonna just save those out, and it's gonna automatically just save them as the name view. Uh, when we come back to the Word document, they're gonna update just like that. Now, so that you guys can see, actually, let's go back to the composer for a second. Because the other image we want to get out there is that exploded view we created. This one, I, as I mentioned, is going to be a little bit different, though. We're going to take advantage of the technical illustration tool uh, where we're going to uh, have more options because this is vector based images, so lines, shadings. Uh, so if I do a quick, quick preview on this, you'll see what one would look like. So this is, has some lines, some uh, silhouette line work, and some nice shadow effects for the, the view, which is kind of cool. If I turn on color regions, it might give me a different look again. So a lot of options that you can tweak to get just what you're, you're looking for in your documentation. So this one we're gonna do is save out, save as. Uh, we're gonna save it out as an EPS file, which is a vector-based format. And that one goes out just fine. Uh, and this time what we're gonna do is go into Word and I'll show you how, why, and why these images are updating so nicely for us. We come down here, insert, picture, we're gonna pick an EPS file this time, Espresso Maker 2, insert and link, and so that now we know that when this part changes, uh, the, the image will update as well. Uh, so with this, uh, keep in mind that, you know, it might look a little fuzzy on your screen. That's just the way Word displays vector images. When we actually do go for a print, it's very highly detailed, all right? So, Really that in a nutshell is how we are uh, using Composer to create the, uh, the technical illustrations for a, a product such as this in the, that type of documentation. All right, so from here now, what we wanna do is go on the next step, which is we've done all this work. We have the design, we've got renderings going on, we've got documentation going on, but inevitably uh, a design change still happens. No, those, those don't ever happen, right? No, never. But just in case it does, we're gonna show you how we can uh, work with that. So, you know, in engineering, you know, and again, I'm leveraging my uh, PDM environment here. So on the panel on the right, I see that files have been changed while I've been working in SOLIDWORKS potentially. So other users might be changing these parts and assemblies. So what I do is just say, get the latest version. And with that latest version, you know, we've made some, you know, minor changes. Uh, but we've changed the look really significantly. We've removed the ribs, we've changed the round handle to this more squared off handle. So now the people using Composer and Visualize would be notified that, hey, there's changes to be done here. So let's go back to Composer and look after that. So if we went to the update, we're gonna update the, the component and all we have to do is select from the same folder so let's actually go back into my 
EPDM or my vault. And so under projects, 2016, the Javspresso project under MCAD, there's the new and improved uh, Espresso machine, and we simply have to hit update. So Composer, what it does is just rereads the model and adds any new parts, removed any obsolete parts, and update any change parts. And so all this work we did with other views and so on will update automatically to those changes. And we don't have, well, there'll be very little to no rework required whatsoever. So if we were to go back through and take a look at maybe uh, this image, you can see we have the new handle. Down at the bottom where we did the uh, step three, you know, it's the same step we just created, but it's got the new position, uh, sorry, the new handle and, and the uh, simplified uh, panel on the right. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to just simply re-export the images for this out to uh, the folder. And let's see if it works for me this time. Multiple views. I'm going to do this on high res. We'll save as, and we're going to go out to the image folder again and save all those images. We go back to the Word document and update all the images. Right, so now we've got the squared off handle and the plain panel on the right. So it looks like it came across fine. All right, so now we need to go back to visualize and get the, uh, the other panels updated. All right, so yeah, let's do that. Uh, let me just take control here. So if we go back into visualize, um, obviously we just updated all those those uh, those step by step pictures in Composer is very very fast. Uh, there was no reworking done. Even in in visualize, it's even easier. So when we make any kind of change to the model, we get a an, up, an update right away saying we've changed the model. Would you like to update it? Uh, so we've got a couple of choices here. We could say no. Uh, we could continue working and we could always update this anytime that we wanted to. Maybe there were a lot of design iterations going on and we don't necessarily want to update it right now. Um, but in this case, I'm going to say yes, right? And what that's going to do is it's going to look at that source file. It's going to see what's changed. It's going to update anything that's changed. It's going to add any parts that have been added and it's going to take away any parts that were uh, deleted. Okay, so you can see, I just hit yes. We've got that new bar. Everything is exactly up to date. We've got no pattern on the sides. So everything is, is right where we want it. So at this point in time, uh, again, I could just go ahead, render out all my configurations, uh, and I would be good to go, all right? So uh, just for the sake of time, uh, I pre-rendered out uh, some, some, uh, some animations here. So you can see. Uh, rendered out quite nicely. So we can grab both of these and Again, I'm just going to go into the vault that I've been sharing with Scott the whole time, right? So we can go into our vault We can find the project that we're working on in this case is Javspresso And under the images, I'm just gonna copy and paste Okay Now I can go back to my documentation open up my document, and it's updated my, my design change. So now we, we did that design change. Uh, you can see through our entire manual that giant, the design change has been reflected through the entire manual. We didn't have to go back and replace any images manually. We don't have to worry about having multiple revisions of the same part inside of the same manual. Uh, it was all done in, in, uh, in one step. Awesome. Well, I'm a little behind you, sorry. Oh, <laughs> catch up. Sorry. So the last topic is just about going into uh, beyond what we just saw today. And you know, because there's a lot more capabilities built into both Composer and Visualize. So to start in Composer, you can create some amazing uh, interactive documents. So for example, this is an interactive parts list. So it's using that same vector-based export I did, but they're interactive. So we have highlighting, we have the ability to click and go to other things. Maybe it's the, the installation procedure. Uh, or, or you can go interactive viewers. So on a website or embedded into a presentation, you can have, again, a, a different way of, of explaining, you know, without any words, just guide somebody through. They can rotate themselves, but they're being told, what's the next step? Click here, click there, and watch what that click does. 
So another great way to explain that, uh, that procedure. Absolutely. Um, and forward to that, again, there's a, there's a lot of great uh, outputs that you can get out of Visualized Professional as well. So we can very easily show animations inside of Visualized Professional. So we can put some really slick, uh, kind of hyper-realistic animations in to better describe um, you know, our, our part or uh, for great marketing material. We also have full interactive content. So we can get full what we call VRs, where we can actually manipulate our part any way that we want. Right? So it's we can, photorealistic. It it's photorealistic. Amazing. It looks really good. We can, imp, we can uh, you know, uh, embed this right in our website, right? So our, our end users or our customers can go ahead and view our, uh, view our part uh, and kind of feel like they can even touch it. Right? So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very cool, and you can get some very cool content out of, uh, out of Composer and Visualize. Awesome. So just to recap, I mean, again, the session was really about, uh, you know, connecting different departments and taking more advantage and repurposing your great CAD data to uh, all these different uses, you know, marketing, technical docs, manufacturing, engineering. It's, it's all with that virtual twin of your, of your model.